Welcome back to the Michael Volpe Investigates podcast that I call The Impromptu. We're back by video. I'm here with Alicia Clark Walker. And Alicia, you've got a horrible story out of, uh, I think it's upstate New York. Your, yes, Albany area. Uh, your ex-husband is a registered sex offender. Mm -hmm. And initially, you had physical custody. But currently, not only does he have sole custody, but you have a two-year protective order that bars you from seeing either of the two children. So um, why don't you explain it? And while you do, what I'm going to do is get up. I think uh, it's the one of the last orders from the judge. His name is Anthony McGinty, and we'll go over uh, who he is. But uh, so the audience can see what McGinty was doing as uh, as you explain the story. So Tell everyone how it is that a registered sex offender has sole custody of your two children. Well, that's a good question. So in um, May and August of 2019, we had um, a few hearings, um, custody hearings, and there was no petition in front of the court for to switch custody from myself, who had full custody at the time, and the father had weekend visitations and... Um, he also had, I think, like one weekday visitation. And uh, we had a conference um, in August. And the judge at the time, Judge Kathleen Shalakis, in this hearing, um, without trial and without a petition by the father, granted Luke full custody. All right. And now, before you go on, so the, the judge who initially did this is not Anthony McGinty. Am I correct? Yes, correct. Okay. All right, and McGinty will pop in later. And what we're looking at is an order that he came up with just last month. So go ahead. Right. And um, I was complaining. My daughter in the summer of 2019 complained to me that she went to a bondage party with her father. And I brought that forth to the, to the court. And in that hearing, the um, attorney at the time for the father, Joseph Drescher, admitted that the he takes the children to a boudoir studio where they have various BDSM and bondage parties. And in that same hearing where the father's attorney admitted that they, the children went there, the um, judge, Kathleen Chalakis, gave full custody to the father with um, limited supervised visitation with me now, what what was her uh, justification for doing um, this? The justification she didn't really have one, other than that I was looking at her strangely. But she also claimed that I was Buddhist and I would not take the children to the doctor, which I've right. always done. right now. Is that is that true about Buddhists? No, that is not true about Buddhists. I mean, probably maybe some Buddhists, just like any other religions well, have. Right, but no, but is it a tenet of the Buddhist religion to not go to the doctor? No, it is not. Okay. As so, far as I'm aware. All right. So, but you definitely remember at this hearing, this was a hearing that preceded this order, am I correct? Yes. You and definitely remember... Who, who brought up that you're Buddhist and you may not talk to, take them to the doctor? The attorney for the child um, brought that up, my religious um, my religious findings that I was Buddhist and they were afraid that I would no longer take the children to the doctor, which I always have uh, with their yearly checkups. And I took them to the chiropractor and, you know, believed in Western medicine. Mm -hmm. And um, then I sued Catherine Shalakis, the judge, for violation of First Amendment rights in a 1983 federal case. And, um, and for, for those who don't know, 1983 is when someone in a position of power violates your civil rights. It's actually first passed when President Ulysses S. Grant was president. Go ahead. Yes, and um, that was dismissed on the basis of the judge had quasi-judicial immunity. And you can Google that case. If you Google Shalakis, mm -hmm. you'll you'll find it all over um, the internet with log blogs covering that case. And mm -hmm. um, that's, you know, public knowledge. And so that um, 
order proceeded throughout the years. I, despite many pleadings, I could not have any judge to um, dismiss the order. And in New York State, you're supposed to have a trial before a parent is stripped away of all their rights, and that never happened. Mm -hmm. uh, so it just kind of stuck. Well, to the this, final. this order was a temporary order. Yes. Right? Yes. And for those who don't know, can you appeal a temporary order? You can appeal a temporary order. You and um, you um, say, um, you, maybe you not. Don't. You generally cannot. And how long uh, before there was a permanent order? So this permanent order that you have on the screen was just recently. Uh, so uh, what, when was this temporary order that you were just recently speaking about? When was that issued? August, August of 2019. So from August of 2019 until this order, which happened in February of 2023, it was strictly temporary orders yes. and in terms of your parenting time did they change much well it got a lot more restrictive i was under supervised um, visitation in which i engaged in that as best i could had family members and um, my ex-husband kicked off uh, every single supervisor for whatever reason um, since then and um, I kind of ran out of su supervisors. The only one he would approve of is himself. Mm -hmm. okay. And um, so I haven't really seen, I, I kind of ran out because he would dismiss or not approve of every single supervisor that I put forward. We had some COVID stuff going on. A lot of the paid supervision uh, went defunct during COVID. So I have only seen my children once in two years. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and this guy ordered you to pay him child support, pay your ex child support. Yes. I, I am unemployed and um, have. And, and required to pay about $750 a month. Yes. Yeah. Hey, even, even when I had, even that includes the time that I had full custody as well. Right. And then uh, his, current girlfriend um and let me get this up on the screen but his current girlfriend what what does she do for a living she's a professional sex worker uh, and there is that her yes that is and All that right. is so she's into snm and bondage yes. and when you brought that up to the court what did what did the court respond with when you brought that up they did not respond at all so they, they didn't really care that much that she's in that cinema bondage. And what what happened when you brought up that uh that he that he's a registered sex offender? They because it was um quite a long time ago, they mm -hmm. they defended him saying it was such a long time ago. Um, even though very recently he within a actually had a testimony during our trial that he sexually assaulted one of the supervisors, which was also ignored by the court and called her testimony not credible. Okay. All right. So, um, so go on. So, so explain what happened when McGinty, when McGinty jumped into the case. He was there, um, I think he was put in there around spring of two, of last year, mm -hmm. 2022, and he basically conducted the trial, and he's from Ulster County, which is um, about two hours away from, you know, my county, and he right. was assigned. And while, while you explain that, I'm going to get up an article about uh, McGinty, uh, and you recently interviewed with, uh, tell us her name again. It's Francesca Blaine. Amato. Francesca, and Francesca wrote a book about her custody case. She had him, but she's not the only one with a problem with this guy. He's being sued by several women who all allege that he has a pattern of giving custody to abusers. Am I right? That's correct. Okay. And, and what, I, go ahead. I actually sued McGinty um, for First Amendment rights, they 
definitely try to punish me for speaking out that I haven't uh, seen my children. And then you also had an issue with the school that your kids went to. Yes. Okay, so explain what happened there. So the school had hired my um, registered sex offender ex to come in at the end of the year and do some um, videos of the children um, into the end of the year. And um, I felt like that was highly inappropriate. And mm -hmm. um, I protested across the street on the first day of school. And I received an uh, immediate restraining order from the school and all the activities by Judge McGinty, um, mm -hmm. trying to let the public aware of a registered sex offender going into the Able Park Elementary Schools and filming this. I, I, I reached out to, I will get, a couple of people did talk to me uh, a little bit about your case, but I reached out to the school. They didn't respond. Uh, but uh, so if I'm keeping track, uh, the initial judge, what is her name again? Catherine Chalakas, who's now retired. Right. She violated your religious rights, which is one part of the First Amendment. Yes. And judge McGinty violated your right to free assembly. Yes. Which is another part of the First Amendment. Yes. And I I do let me let me get this back up. Um and oh hold on, and that's that's the wrong one. I want to get the uh there's other parts of your uh of your of your first amendment that have been violated as well. Um and hold on one second. Okay, that's that's not the I'll I'll get I'll get the right one up. But uh so Multiple parts of your First Amendment rights have been violated, and uh, and they don't seem to care that no. your ex-husband. Uh, now let me play devil's advocate. He, uh, this this was, and, and let me get this up. I think, um, let me see if that's the. Oh no, that's not the right one. All right, I've 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 got his. Uh, I've I've got his regist registry up, but it, it uh, the crime happened in two thousand one. So aren't yeah. they aren't they correct? Um, it happened a long time ago. Why does that matter? Well, he was still on the registry. Okay. Um, All right. So I, a cynic would say, "Well, you married him." Yes, I did, and I was in my early twenties, and I did know. Um, that he was a registered sex offender, but the story he told was that he was 18 and um, had consensual sexual relationships with a 17 year old. And that's why he was put on the registry. It wasn't until I started doing FOIL requests in the divorce that I, that I found out the crimes were much more egregious. Mm -hmm. for sure. And he, within the last five years also, have um someone that came to me right, saying, so he 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 told you a story that's completely different from the truth yes he he essentially told you that it was statutory rape yes right mm -hmm. okay um all right so let me let me go through this a little bit so the the first thing i wanted to go through is this uh, in the order that the judge says, Ms. Walker has demonstrated irrational and impulsive behavior, poor judgment, a propensity to put her own needs above those of her young children and an inability to co-parent with Mr. Walker. What, uh, what, what is the evidence that he, of, of that, or how would you, how would you respond to that? It's just simply character assassination. There is no evidence other than that I went up to school and tried to let the public be aware that a registered sex offender was videotaping. So, so really, it's you speaking out, you protesting that they that they believe is uh, you putting your own needs yes. above your kids. Am I right? Yes. Now mm -hmm. over here. It says, Mr. Walker's testimony regarding the children is un uncontroverted. The children appear to be thriving in his care. They are performing well in school. They're in good health. And they have a therapist to maintain their emotional health. And the children are also engaged in extracurricular activities, including Girl Scouts and soccer, 
and flag football uh, and et cetera. And it says that he's been the primary custodian for the past three years. So is that accurate? Are they doing well in his care? In my opinion, they are not. Um, I've re I still receive reports from the school and um, the oldest daughter has emotional outbursts and she's seeking an IEP in the, uh, in the school. So, mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I do think no matter how well they're behaving or not behaving at some level, uh, two kids who were, are missing their mom, who was a loving right. primary caregiver. Right. He, he's suggesting that switching custody midstream is having no effect on children. I, I think right. that most psychologists would disagree that when you lose your mother with no contact. Um, now, uh, later on, he says that you definitely should have some custodial time and uh, and that if you behave properly for six months, that, uh, that it'll increase. And yet about a month later, he, he ordered a protective order against you. Mm -hmm. So what, what happened between the time that this order came in and the time that he got a protect and the protective order bars you from your kids for two years? Yes. Uh, nothing happened. Um, and I believe in this order, it is if I received six months of therapy and then the father gets to decide whether that's good enough or not. So there's no actual real custodial time in this order that I'm aware of that if I completed six months of therapy, which I don't, I don't right. think that I need, but if I did, there would be weekend visitations. Um, it's still based so the on the entire thing was based on, uh, what what the dad uh want what would agree to uh and one other thing that i just noticed that's interesting the court finds it appropriate to impute income for miss walker when calculating child support so in fact he is basing your child support based on income that you are not actually making but that this judge mcginty believes you're making you could make am i right, right. And, and there's a whole nother complicated um decisions in that that the the father stole the company our very successful you know company in which you know i think i'm going to be engaging in you know supreme court action so he stole the company and he stole the kids and i could just go out in it, to the streets to get a very another success so he is basing income uh based on a company that you and your ex-husband once had and based on income that you made uh, from that company, mm -hmm. and Judge McGinty believes you could just go out, create a new company, and make the same kind of money. Yes, that, right. Yes, when he when he has taken when the Mr. Walker has taken over the company, it is receiving um, over a hundred thousand dollars in income uh, still from that same company. Mm -hmm. And and it seems like in the order. The judge is saying the opposite that you were the one who took significant money out of it out of the company. Um, that's definitely not true. And I have many, many motions and um exhibits supporting that with forensic charts and bank accounts, which he just he just completely ignored. One was um Mr. Walker was um ordered half of the remaining or one third of the remaining savings in one of our accounts. And um, that was just completely ignored. Mm -hmm. And the last thing that, that's another violation of uh, your first amendment rights. I can't, I can't find it in here now. Uh, however, I know I saw it. Uh, you, I, he put a restriction on your social media uh, activities. Am I right? That's, that's correct. So explain what the judge did there. So another violation of the First Amendment rights. So your your right to practice religion, your right to free assembly, and now it appears your right to speak freely have all been violated. Correct. The in the in that order, and I'm paraphrasing, I can't disparage Mr. Walker, the father, and I can't disparage his um sex worker paramour. 
And mm -hmm. I can't encourage any third party to do so. Okay, but does he also restrict your uh, um, your activity on, on social media? Yeah, he's in the order. The specific language, I believe, is I can't post on social media about, about my About this case. Yes. Right. Okay, so he, he uh, so it seems like he's, he's violated uh, multiple parts of the First Amendment uh, with regards to you uh, and multiple judges. So uh, mm -hmm. I wanted to uh, talk about a couple of people who did respond to me. Doug Bra Brada, who is he? Doug Brada is the attorney for the child. All right, and so if you're not in the state of New York, it's not exactly the same, but it's the equivalent of a guardian at Lido. Uh, yes. And before, so let me read what he said, and I want you to uh, respond to what he said. Sure. I am sorry, sir, but the rules governing attorneys for children do not allow me to publicly comment on the details of a particular custody case. He is correct. He can't, but he does go on in general. I can state generally that custody trials are often highly complex and that courts must consider all the evidence, favorable or unfavorable to each party in making their decisions. The orders resulting from those decisions are of course subject to review on appeal to a higher court. I can also state unequivocally that I would never tolerate a court acting in any way prejudicially toward a parent based on their religion while I am on the case. Doing so would be contrary to one of our most cherished constitutional rights. What do you think? Did, did he, did Mr. Broda, and, and I, I wanna, number one, he he answered the way I always say that people like him should answer. It, he can't, he can't comment about the case, but he can make a statement like the one he just made. And uh, so he denies, by, he would never, uh, allow for religious bigotry. What do you what do you say to that? I absolutely disagree. In this case, since he's been assigned, he has defended Mr. Walker and he has defended um, Sarah in, in many different ways. Uh, and very bizarrely, he um, objected over three hundred times during trial um, against me, and he did not object once um for the father which is you know egregious and he actually got so upset during trial that he actually physically attacked me on the stand and that's in the um transcript and when i filed a disqualification motion he said that he had every right to be biased and to um and i can send that to you he has every right to be by bias and he has every right to be aggressive towards me on the stand okay all right, and then the second person who responded to me is Leslie Silva, and who is she? She's the attorney for oh, Mr. Mr. Rex, and I, I reached out to Luke. He didn't respond. Here is a response by Ms. Silva. Good afternoon, Mr. Volpe. There is a gag order in this case that my client and I will be adhering to. I apologize, but we cannot participate due to the order. Are you aware of any gag order? No, I'm not aware of any gag order. I sent you everything that I um, had. She might be referring that I can't post on social media and um, encourage any gag order. third that's party to do so. But that's right. the only thing I can think of that she's right. thinking about. So uh, I, I'm i not aware of any gag order. Can you send the copy? That I asked her that. I'm unable to do so without violating it. I hope you understand I have a hard time believing that she can say there's a gag order, but not <laughs> give me a copy of said gag order. Uh, one interesting thing that I found out about the state of New York, I did call, uh, and I'm not going to be able to pronounce the county, but what is the name of the county? that? Prince Lear. Whatever you just said. Lear, I yeah. called, right. I called over there, and they did actually say that because it's a divorce, it is by default sealed, which is extremely non-transparent and something that I am completely against. Court is a public process. And even though these are very personal issues, uh, it shouldn't be uh, sealed by default. Uh, and the state of New York has taken just one more step 
in closing courtrooms. And uh, I completely disagree with that. Uh, so the, the last thing I wanted to talk about um, is, and let me get this up. You have, I, I think you can see this, you have filed a, uh, a, 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 I think a civil rights lawsuit, am I right? Yes. Okay, so uh, walk, while I, while I scroll, you know, at a leisurely pace, explain what this civil rights lawsuit is all about. And did you file it yourself? Or do you have an I did, I, I did file it myself. You know, I put well, a lot. I of just want to point out, it's 33 pages, and it looks pretty professional. Yeah. You can know how to cite the, the cases, I think, properly. 42 USC, Section 1983, 1985. That's, that's the, the law uh, I, I really like, uh, former President Grant. So that is, I always point that out. That's the law that he passed to actually get rid of the Ku Klux Klan. But go ahead. So what 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 did you file? What's the substance of the of the civil rights lawsuit? What are you hoping to accomplish? Um, it it was dismissed in federal court before it was even heard. Um, but it was for the First Amendment violations. Um, there was a judge in between uh, Judge Shalakis because it's dragged on for so long. Um, mm -hmm. Judge Shalakis said, um, Judge McGinty, Judge Rivera, and he did the same thing. He put gag orders. Um, I can't post about the children. I can't post about this case on social media. Um, the violation of right to assemble, um, right to protest, um, you know, against these uh, sexual misgivings. And mm -hmm. um, it, it was the basis of, you know, the numerous and myriad of violations of First Amendment rights, especially to free speech. It's, uh, it's extremely difficult to sue uh, a judge. I think you weren't only suing the judge, but a judge can, uh, based on on Supreme Court case law, Stump versus Parkland being the, the main case, can violate almost any of your rights. And as long yep. as they can say they're doing it as a judge, you have almost no chance uh, to win. Um, and uh, was it dismissed based on that? Yeah, it was dismissed because they said it was frivolous. Um, the third the department was frivolous, so it's frivolous that your kids were taken because you're a Buddhist. It's frivolous that they're saying you're mentally unstable or or not uh, worried about the kids because you decided to protest and assemble. Mm -hmm. That's all frivolous. It's frivolous that they are. Stop, and here you you are saying that your First Amendment rights to post on social media uh, were violated. So that all of that they're saying is frivolous. And yeah, well, the, but the it was dismissed before it was even heard. So um, they threw out the case, and they've been doing that a lot. I've I've noticed in my research in New York State when you when you try to get the federal government involved. Um, you know, in the, in the, this third department, um, they, they have been throwing out every single, um, case that I'm aware of, um, that, that are filed by pro se litigants as frivolous, yeah. the same like standardized, yeah. you know, letters that are coming back that I'm seeing now on this. They won't even hear it. Right. And I, one of, one of the orders that, that you refer to, I am writing to request you, a so ordered defendant Alicia Walker immediately cause the removal of a Facebook posting dated August 6, 2021, containing correspondence to this court directly related to the pending litigation and marking specific re reference to the counsel for the plaintiff. Uh, by the way, and I've, I've done a story in the, in the country of Australia, posting something like that would actually be against the law. Um, so I, you are citing specific uh, examples of your First Amendment rights being violated in the court yeah. that you seem to care. All right, we've got um, a few minutes left. If if your kids are watching, what, what would you want to say to them? That I love you and I miss you and I know I'll see you soon. And um, I know you're probably be told, be told that I don't care and that I, you know, it's my choice not to see you, but that's absolutely not the the case. And then I'm fighting every single day to, to see you again. Okay. And anything else you wanted to add before we go? No, thank you very much for having me on.